wanted to talk about, you know, what you see, uh, what kind of visions do you see about the future and how blockchain fits into that? You know, uh, uh, somehow, uh, I don't know if you could call it karma or whatever. Um, you know, 1997, um, when I was in school, my uh, elder brother Krishna gave me a, a computer with open source software. Um, you know, it was a second-hand computer. He was working for a cooperative, which, mm -hmm. uh, which is the largest milk cooperative in India, uh, which is called Amul. Yes. And, uh, when he left uh, to Singapore, he came to Singapore to work after that. They gave me his used computer, which had Linux on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gave me an idea of what the philosophy meant, you know, uh, openness, sharing, uh, all of that stuff. And I got hooked into it. Mm -hmm. So I started the first Linux user group in India, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the south of India uh, during that time. And, and then went on to work for the largest open source companies in the world. In fact, uh, somebody was telling me that I'm probably the only human being who worked for all the big open source companies. I worked for mm -hmm. uh, Red Hat, I worked for SUSE, I worked yeah. for a Solaris team uh, at, at Sun, mm -hmm. and then I worked for an American company called TerraSoft Solutions, mm -hmm. which uh, had the only Linux distribution on PowerPCs. Right. So what I learned was that, uh, uh, that the economy need not be a zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, none of these companies made money on selling the software. Mm -hmm but they had other business models which incentivize everybody. The developers in the community were incentivized. Mm -hmm. uh, the companies that bought the software were incentivized. Um, you know, in fact, the biggest exit last year mm -hmm. uh, was uh, IBM buying Red Hat for $35 yes. billion. Dollars. Right. So it taught me that there is a alternative paradigm which thinks about abundance, which thinks about better value mm -hmm. and wealth distribution. Um, and it has been achieved over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, you know, with, with blockchain and the peer-to-peer -peer technologies, we will see the emergence of the third pillar. Mm -hmm. So so I, I like to call it the third pillar. So what I mean by that is that in the last thousand years of, uh, you know, human history, uh, the first pillar were the kings. The kings were the ones who organized economic activity. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Qin Emperor in China fought against all the warring tribes, united them, and yes. became the first modern republic as, as we know it. Yeah. And it became so powerful because they could collect taxes, organize the armies, um, you know, get very large armies and all the other countries next door had to come to a very similar structure because they had to defend themselves. Mm. So so what happened was that that became the first pillar. And during the colonial era, when the British came to uh, Asia uh, for trade, I mean, they realized that they could rule these countries and, and they wanted to have large armies. But the queen herself didn't want to send her army. So for the first time, the colonization work was given to a third party enterprise. Mm. So the British East India Company became the first private enterprise. Right. And they realized that they were very efficient. You know, they reduced transaction mm. costs, they could create economies of scale and all that stuff. Mm. And that became the second pillar today. So we have private enterprises. Mm. But the challenge is that today we have 2 billion people, you know, without access to banking. We have 4 billion people who are under the bottom of the pyramid. Mm. So, so the first two pillars have not been able to cater. They have created a tremendous prosperity, wealth and everything else. And we mm. should be grateful to uh, our countries and our private institutions for doing that. Uh, but the trickle-down effect, that the idea that the value gets distributed at the bottom of the pyramid has not been uh, right. very exactly. successful. So the third pillar is what I call as the peer-to-peer -peer pillar, mm. uh, which is where, you know, the story of, you know, human origins where people lived in tribes. Yeah. And, um, and it's going back to that, to all these communities that we see in the blockchain world. Mm. And each community is passionate. Mm. You know, there are the green warriors who are trying to, you know, create... Uh, carbon trading and carbon yes. credits and incentivize green behavior with blockchain. And then you have the art guys, you know, who want to get, uh, empower the, the common artists by giving them a voice, by yeah. giving them uh, prosperity, by tokenizing the art and all that stuff. Yes. So it is going back to the roots of the human story where mm. people take care of themselves. Mm. Um, and that can be done with the help of blockchain. I yeah. see that's going to be a very interesting future for us.